Well, hello and welcome to one of our another fabulous demos here at Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery. Today we have Frederica Antonio and her husband Randy from Acoma Pueblo who are going to be demonstrating their wonderful traditional pottery making techniques. Um, Frederica has been doing this for many, many years. How long have you been doing this, Frederica? Uh, for like about 30 plus years. Thirty. And how long have you two been married? Uh, 30... 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 33. Okay, so Randy, have you been doing, have you been helping Frederico with this from the beginning? Um, usually I'm the one that's processing the clay. Okay, so that's but what did I you do. start 30, 30 years ago oh, when yeah. Frederico was yeah. doing it? Yeah. So she roped you in a long time ago, right? Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to let you guys kind of demonstrate and Carlo and I are behind the camera. We're going to be asking you guys questions. If anybody who is out there has any questions, by all means, you can type it into the YouTube chat and we will definitely find, uh, get those questions answered for you. You can also call us 505-986-1234 and we will get those questions answered for you on the air. There is a couple minute delay for live streaming, so just be patient. We'll get to you as soon as we can. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome you guys and thank you so much for being here. And uh, so what are you going to do for us today? Uh, well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> be doing a demonstration I'm, of putting the slip on the pot and then I'm going to polish. And then after I finish that, I already have a pot here that's lined with the pencil and then I'm going to start um, making the lines on the and, pot. And how do you do the pencil lines? Um, well, actually, I just um, have the pot, and then I just get my fingers, and then I mark it on one side, and then I go on the other side, and then I mark it, and then I just go all the way through the middle to make the, and then I just use my fingers to make the, the lines. And the pot that you have today, how do you make it in the beginning? Because we don't have any, uh, we're not seeing how the pot is actually made. You don't buy any molds. No. So what do you do? Um, this is our traditional clay right here. And uh, my husband, he's the one that goes and mines it. And it comes in bigger chunks than, than these. Okay. And what he does is he puts it in the, in the pan puts water in there and then it um, all breaks up into small pieces and then he uses the, um, the grinding stone to grind all the clay and then what we do is he mixes the, the, the mud for me and then after he does that then I start making the pots. Okay and you yeah. do it through the coil method is that yes. correct? Yes well and the smaller ones are not coil it's the kind of like the medium, the bigger the medium. So for the smaller ones, then you kind of you know start yeah. in a in in a hand, and you but you yes. do it by hand. Yes. It's not done with any wheel or any no. machine of any no. sort, right? Well, cool. Well, we can't wait to see what you guys can can do for us. So by all means, uh, let's see what you can do. Okay. So you said you were going to start with putting on a slip. Yeah. The. Where do you get the slip from? Um, we get it on our reservation. Um, he goes get he gets all the paints. These are all natural pigment paints, and these are all the the um, the colors that we have. Um, the white one is this one. It's a it's a like a white sand, and then he puts it in a bucket, and then he puts water in there, and then when the water rises up to the top, then he strains it, mm -hmm. and then he keeps doing that until it gets kind of thick. And then after that, then he he, um, he puts the um, the panty hose, and then he strains it with the with the panty hose. <laughs> oh, nice! To make so, it real, not for the sand, for it not to. So go in. in the olden days, obviously the that material was probably not available. <laughs> yeah. What do you think they used or did differently back then? I think they back used then back then like watching my grandma, she just put the sand in there and she just put water in there. Okay. And that's all. She, 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 didn't, she, didn't, she didn't strain it or anything. She just used it like that. Oh, so, so you so made that's an why improvement it was like, on the process. It was kind of like rough, you know. Yep. Yeah, but, but now we go down to the real fine stuff where it just polishes real smooth. And is the type of water that you use important? Mm. Uh, it is. The rainwater is probably the, the best water. 
Okay. But we, we, we've just been using regular... Regular, regular water. Bottle Re- water. Oh, bottled bottle water. water. Yeah. Okay, and you so you soak your, your clay, and yeah. then uh, you let it dry out into what you have here, yeah. right? And then, Randy, you grind it then, is oh, that yeah, correct? Oh, that's, yeah, that's all I do is I'm sitting there every day grinding, <laughs> yep. and you are asking, like, you're probably super strong, but it's not, it's <laughs> yeah. not like, I mean, I just sit there and just... Just kind of keep you know, going. Let the rock do the work. Yeah, it? that's right. So I just sit there. And I don't go real fine. I just see how this is, and I I sift this again. I'll sift it again, and then the the big pieces I'll you know regrind again. Okay. But I don't sit there and yeah. So I just sit there and just let the rock just do the work and nice. But I it, it, one pan like this I could probably do like in one day. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I have... And, like, and about how many pots would that pan make, maybe? This one probably make about um, three of the bigger ones. Okay. And then six of the medium. Okay. And and up like eight of the small ones, and then ten of the real, the smaller ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's how it usually comes out. See yeah. how the clay is um, breaking up to small pieces? Yeah, can you see that, Carlo? Yep. So uh, anyway, we do have a bit of a a few people here. Does anyone here have any questions for? Come on. uh, Just talk right now. I do. So how does she shape each of the pots by hand? So did you get that? How do you shape the pots each by hand? We have a lot of tools at home, and we have like little broken potteries at the at the bottom, and. I'll usually be sitting there, you know, cutting them up for her and just shaping them. Then she, she, you know, she'll start off making the pottery. Mm-hmm. Like the little ones, she don't, she'll just add maybe one coil to the small ones. Mm-hmm. And then the media, maybe two coils. And then the big ones, usually like three coils. And when you say coil, what do you mean by coil? Um, like the bigger one, mm-hmm. you just make it into a bow. And then you get another piece of clay, and then you roll it out and flatten it out, and, and then you add it on. You add it on. Okay, so, so a really sense. good example of how this is done, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, is okay. you make a big snake out of clay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? And then you wrap it around, and then you attach it to the base, right. and then you smooth it out from the inside, and then you smooth it out from the outside, right. and then you repeat that process, and you basically make almost a cylinder. And then you shape the piece the way that you're going to shape it from the inside out. Is that, is that right. correct? Yes. Right. That's right. That's yeah. what coil is. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very yep. much. There I are did not no know. Some wheels used on any piece of pottery or anything that we have here in the entire shop. Mm-hmm. There are no uh, molded pieces. So that means something that is in a mold. Every single thing that we carry is something that is made by hand. The real way, the hard way, yeah. the old way by all the Native <laughs> Americans who do it. And you can also tell too when if the pottery is handmade because it's not really you know that straight or the shape is you know kind of not, off on one side and it's not done on a wheel. Yeah, it's not done on a the wheel. The wheel, the wheel, they come out perfect all the time, you know. So but that's how you can tell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said you were gonna put a slip on it. Yeah. What is a slip? It's this. It's the white. <laughs> is it like a? It's like a primer. Or- um, yeah, a little, it, you could call it that, yeah, because when you put that on there, then the paint sticks better. Yeah, if, if, yeah. if it's yeah. just like this way, and if you put the paint on there, and if you go like this way, the paint will wipe off. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but you have to put the, the the slip on, and then so it when you polish it, it comes out shiny like this, and then when you paint it, then the paint don't don't wipe off. It's almost like an adhesive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and actually, I believe what they have to do is they put the slip on. Slip is effectively a watered down clay. Yeah. And what they take, then they take a river stone, a round stone, and they burnish it into the surface. So what that does is it effectively fills all of the pores of the clay. So then you then have a, 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 a something that's solid to work with work on yes. <laughs> and it also produces a really nice white color too which is the background for the, the, the beautiful work that uh, yeah. Frederica does is that all did I do okay yes. you're doing good <laughs> <laughs> so how on earth do you do this design I mean it's so perfect um, 
well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we've been doing that. Uh, yeah, we've been doing this for a long time, so we're pretty much know um, how. Well, at, at first, I do the top of the pot. After I do the top of the pot, then I make little squares on all the. Um, and then when I'm ready to fill in the pattern, I don't know what I'm going to put on it first. And then all of a sudden, it seems like my hands, the, okay, so the one, yeah. The, the yeah, it's just. It just comes out how, how it wants to come out. <laughs> so, Frederica, I have one other question. Um, once you do that intricate paintwork that you do, is there any sort of um, coating that you do after you do the paint? After the paint goes no. on to no. the clay? Mm -hmm. so it's no. Yep, the, so, the paint, so, from my understanding, and I'll just make if I'm wrong, let me know. Um, all you do is you, when you finish painting the piece, you're done with the exception of firing. Yes. The piece yes. is then fired. Yeah. And it's fired. It's fired. And then it becomes permanent once the piece is yes. fired. Yeah. And, and you can, um, if, it, if it's dusty, I mean, you can use a dusting cloth, and then you can use a damp, damp cloth and wipe it. The paint won't wipe off or nothing because it's fired on there already. So, um, although we still don't recommend using moisture in any form for cleaning these pieces <laughs> um, just because they if, if done incorrectly or too much or yeah. too often it can very damage the pieces so um, the only way we recommend cleaning these guys is either using a feather duster or a Swiffer duster for uh, that or compressed computer air as long as you don't let the chemical out sideways on that because you can just use that as a duster but otherwise we try not to touch the pots um, especially with water because water is one of those things they're not high fired they are not glazed so they do not hold water and actually that was a function in the very old days of, uh, of pots because what would happen is is the pot would people would they're called water jars and people would fill the pieces full of water and carry them on their head up to the <laughs> up to the top of the mesa. But what would happen is, is the water would leach out the outside of the piece, and it would evaporate from the outside, thus cooling the contents of the inside, but giving a quick cold drink of water. But after a day or two, your pot would dissolve completely, and so you continually make more and more. But after these days, because the pots are so beautifully done and so many hours are spent painting them, you wouldn't want to ruin them by doing this to them because they're no longer functional. Am I, am I right in all of these yes. guys? If I'm wrong, let me know. <laughs> you guys know better than I do generally. So I, well, I know I said I had one question, but I do have another question. So um, in the olden days, what did you use in terms of like a kiln to fire these? Uh, outdoor firing. Outdoor firing. An outdoor can, fire, and then you just put it on like on a pedestal and um, fire it that way, or how does it? When you do outside firing, like for us, we have to do it um, all day. You have to do it all day. Get the fire going and let the pot warm up, and then once it warms up, then you can, you know, put wood around it and get the ah, get it to fire okay so you gradually and, heat it up yeah i and see then, and then to let it cool same thing you just have to let it cool not not touch it or anything okay and do you do just one pot at a time um or do i do, do when i do the outside firing but i don't i don't like to fire her potteries outside because you can't, you can't tell what's going to happen to it, or mm -hmm. if the smoke's going to get into it, mm -hmm. or plus the thirty-year-old marriage, right? That could be yeah. a problem. <laughs> 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 I'm just teasing. Yeah, so, wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about thirty-some years too. I can't remember. <laughs> so her potteries are like art, and it's just like you don't want to mess it up. You don't want to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we like for in the fire. market, I'll fire maybe two of her her pots out, mm -hmm. out traditional firing, but that's for in the market. Um, but like like these ones now, these ones are all fired in a kiln. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we don't want to. 
So from my understanding, um, Acoma pots recently have moved from the outdoor firing to a kiln firing in the last seven, 50 to 70 years. Um, so most things these days from Acoma Pueblo are fired out or are fired in kilns. Yes. And the main reason is the, the the beautiful black and white geometric designs and consumers who are demanding that pieces be perfect because a big <laughs> fire cloud on big black and white designs is is viewed often as a mistake from us who are the buyers. <laughs> um, however, some people, view, some groups and some pueblos in the Navajo Nation view the fire clouds as part of the process and part of the decoration. Mm -hmm. And so some groups actually build their fires unevenly to, mm -hmm. so that they get those black blemishes or fire, fire clouds because it, it, it's the way it is. But from mm -hmm. Acoma Pueblo, they've gone, to, uh, they've gone away from traditional firing methods because A, it, a it's really hard. Um, and B, <laughs> the results are not nearly as consistent and there's a whole lot more breakage and we want to keep everybody super happy. Mm -hmm. Is, it, is that all? Is that uh, yes. Yeah, because then like her, her pots, I mean, it takes her a whole week just to finish one. So you don't want to just fire mm -hmm. it and mess it up. It's a week worth of work. So, <laughs> first of all, they're absolutely beautiful. Mm, thank you. Um, for something that is like a mid-size, like that one right in the middle, yes. how much time would that take you from the very beginning to, yeah, from the very beginning to when it's completely finished? Um, <clears throat> well, the, the color that I do on the top, I, I make the small, I make the squares and then I fill in the colors, each one. I, I do the, um, the red first and then after I do the red and I do the, the yellow. After do, I do the yellow, then I do the brown. After I do all that, then I have to reline the whole the pot again on the top. Yeah. Oh, I see. But if it's just black and white, I don't need to um, outline the the pot. Yeah. I see. Yeah, like about the bigger ones usually take about two, two to two and a half weeks. It just depends on wow. how how long I work on it. Yeah. When That's when we make pottery, we'll we'll make like about eight eight potteries. So she'll she'll have her pottery sit in there. When we make potteries, or we'll make yeah. Sometimes we'll make like ten at one time yeah, in so one it's day. Like a, yeah. It's it's not that it's not that hard to make pottery. Mm -hmm. but it's just her painting that takes long yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what and like yeah. the grinding I grind clay every day I, I sit there and grind clay but like mm -hmm. I say I'm not sitting there like yeah. I just let the rock you know uh -huh. so and you have I'll, them at different stages yeah. and yeah. how do you come up with the different designs obviously something comes to you and said okay oh, this is what this her. pot <laughs> yeah. this pot yeah i think this is a design because of the shape of the pot i think this is the perfect design for it how do you does it just come to you yeah or it is just comes to me once i finish um lining the whole pot then it, it just like i think i'll do this you know this pattern or that pattern or i i i'll make the steps or uh -huh. you know it just like comes like comes to you. I don't know what I'm gonna put on it until I'm finished like lining it and so because uh, it looks like I mean to me I take a look at each of these beautiful pots and I'm taking a look at the the shape and the size of the pots yeah. and it seems like the 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 intricate artwork and the painting and everything seem to just go with the pot and that's why I was asking you that question. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> yeah it's just Years and years. Well, when I first started um, doing pottery, I just used to do just the checkerboard. Yeah. Just the black and white checkerboard. All The whole pot will be just yeah. the checkerboard. And then um, my my grandma, she used to do um, cross stitch on aprons. So she told me, you know, you know, you should try this on your pottery and see since you're just doing the black and white squares. So I, I tried it and it came out. So after that, then I just we just started doing our own, our own patterns. Yeah, these are all our own patterns. Um, nobody don't. Well, people are trying to do it, but yeah. yeah so. <laughs> so.
So right now I'm going to go ahead and um, put polish on the top of this pot. Ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, just use your finger, yeah. Okay. Hey, Frederica. I'm just saying hello for everyone watching at home. <laughs> now that the voice has changed. <laughs> So I'm curious, uh, do, you, do you set up beforehand with a, a sense of what shape the pot is going to be when you start coiling, or does it kind of tell you as you go? Um, I just go as I go. I just, it doesn't, I don't really you, have a specific... Plan or something. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I like to use this one because it fits my finger. It's beautiful. Rico, what, what does coiling mean? Coiling? Yeah, what does that mean? Coiling, sorry, um, like, when you, when you start off a little, a little pottery, you know, you just make it into like a cup. Yes. And it'll be like a cup. So you get another piece of clay and you roll it out, and you roll it out and then you flatten it. Uh -huh. So you put that coil on, oh, you add it on, like he said, you just build it up how high you want it and then as the clay um, dries to where you can work it then we push them out yes yeah, so we push them out into just adding coils to it I know some people use a lot of coils where they do add little coils but us like the small ones we only add like one yeah and then the real small ones it's it's just all you know, put our fingers in there and just, yeah. But like this one, that one probably has like one coil on it, just to, just to bring it up. Yeah. And then all the paints, all the paints are natural paints. Like he said, it's just like clay. And I just like to, um, I like to uh, strain them because it just makes it more, more, um, Easier to work with to me. It's e easier to you work get with. All the ingredients on your reservation. Oh, those are all the ones that we have right here are just right around the right around the mesa, the where the pueblo sits. These are just around the bottom. The white, the white is maybe about two miles where you have to walk to get it. There's no road. And same thing with the clay, where the clay mine is. They made a road there once, but. Nobody didn't want that road there, so they shut the road down. So you have to walk to go get the clay. The clay, you have to walk maybe about a mile. Yeah, and just dig it out. And, you, you know, everybody uses, usually using wheelbarrows and stuff, you know, to bring it back. One of the employees, we came here yesterday, we bought a couple of pots here already. We're very excited about it. But he said that the darker red um, has more iron in it. Um, in terms of the wherever, like the rock or wherever that you're taking and you're using it in mm -hmm. front, is that that's correct? It, it probably is. I don't know. I just I just go get the sand and the clay. <laughs> I don't sit there and analyze them and see what's in there or what. <laughs> we we you we we know what works. So yes, but I don't know what's in it or if it does have more iron or what. But I know these these have iron in them because if you use a magnet, it kind of yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then we have to add the um, it's the bee weed the spinach from the what is it? it's called bee weed so we we have to uh, boil that down which takes all day to process just to get the get it down to this. Yeah. And what is that used for? Um, we mix it in into this with this. It wow. just I think it just actually makes it stick because it's more like a sap. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's you can see how it's shiny and it's like a sap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um And how long does one of those pieces last? Oh this will last this will last us like for the whole year. Oh, wow. Like th just this? Yeah, we'll yeah. be here. This will last the whole year. So we had like quite a bit, you know, and you just, you just add it in just to, 
I think it's just to make the paint stick, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we've been having a hard time getting um, the bee wheat back home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it uh, just not growing so much this year? Yeah. Uh, I think what it is is people are, in, you know, we used to go, we go out there and just get the leaves. Okay. And the, the you know, they're, the stalkers they're, there. they're tall. Yeah. And then the, you leave the stalks and it so turn, the back. flowers turn into seeds. But people have just been chopping, them, chopping them down. and So they're so, not repopulating quite as much as they Yeah, used. so we've been having a hard time getting the the beeweed out there back home. Interesting. Because I was talking to uh, Thomas Tenorio uh -huh. from Kiwa I was here last yeah. week. And he was saying he started recently just boiling the whole, yeah. The whole plant. Yeah, Not that's what the they're leaves. doing now. So I guess they're, that's, that's part of what's, uh, yeah, see, yeah, same part thing. Part of the tension. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, I was, we, we were doing a demonstration over at, at the museum. And that's what I was talking about. We're having a real hard time getting the bee wheat back home. Right. And then we come to Santa Fe and we see it all over. Just gotta, <laughs> just gotta throw it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But people don't let you get it. It's not that easy, you know. But so that's that's part of the problem that we're having now is that people are just chopping them down and they're not they're not turning back into seeds. Yeah, they're not looking into the future at all. Yeah. Yeah. So and where was that Robert from? You mentioned back Kiwa. home. So oh, okay. So you mentioned back home from Santa Fe. So how far from Santa Fe do you live? Uh, it's a two hour drive. Two hour? Yeah. Acoma, you, I don't know if you know where Acoma is. It's west of Albuquerque. About what, 60 miles west oh, of Albuquerque? Albuquerque? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's known as Sky City. It's on a beautiful mesa top. The original Pueblo is on a beautiful mesa top. Um, so you can see everybody who's coming um, <laughs> in the long distance. Um, however, very few people now live up top the mesa. It's only the war chiefs or for ceremonial purposes. Uh, there aren't many people that live on the top. They all live around the mesa now, um, if that's correct. Yeah. They just recently opened back up, so I know the tourist center is open. Yeah, it was, it was everything was shut down for a while, but now they're, they're starting to open up. COVID? Yeah, it was because of COVID, but they're starting to open now. And then this just this past Easter, they had a uh, they actually had a feast day, so. Oh, nice. oh that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what happened? What. What was your COVID experience like uh, <laughs> being on the Pueblo? Did you guys just stay home the whole time and make pots? We or? were locked down. <laughs> we were, they shut the whole Pueblo down and we couldn't go anywhere. They just let one, one person from the family leave to go get groceries or whatever. And none of the old people or the, uh, the kids could leave. It was just the, you know, the adults to go get whatever. Yeah, so they had, they had, put gates everywhere and they had shut everything down. But it was there. It was one way in and one way out. Yep, there was only one way in and one way out. But yeah, did you, did you, when you were locked down like that, were you able to have ceremonies with your, No. You know, so you had to stay no. With, with you your just had to stay in your own, yeah, your own yeah. homes? Yeah. No family gatherings or anything? They weren't allowing family gatherings or anything. Well, from my understanding, the Pueblos got hit much harder than most yeah. other places. And one of the reasons is that many people tend to live together. So there's many, many generations in one, fat, in one home. And because <laughs> of the concentration of people living underneath the same roof, that it tends to spread faster. So uh, there was lots of Pueblos that shut down, some that are still remaining as fully shut down for only residents, some that still have curfews. Um, there are oh, only yeah. a few in the beginning, that are a few at the, uh, before that were open to tourists. There are even less now. 
Um, so it, it was a difficult road during COVID for, I think, everybody. And I think everybody for very different reasons. And I think nobody really knew what those reasons were. And everybody's experience was very different from the next groups of people. But everybody's experience was tough. There wasn't anybody who had an easy time. <laughs> so I have a question for either of you. Um, so, Ask your question. so I'm speaking of COVID and, and what was said in terms of multi-generational, you know, all in one home. Mm -hmm. um, if someone did come down with COVID and it wasn't a mild version, it was a more severe version, um, what hospital would you go to or do you have hospitals that are on the reservations? Um, they had, uh, well, the hospital is there, but, you know, if, if it was full, they were, they were bringing them to Albuquerque. I can yeah, they were bringing them to Albuquerque. And then, um, like, the ones that didn't have it so bad, they had a, um, at the casino at Buffalo Thunder, mm -hmm. they had their hotel where people could go and stay there just till they get over the COVID yeah I see so that's what they were doing and even even back home they have like those it's not a big hotel but that's where people were staying yeah the, the ones that had yeah just smile uh, interesting thank you mm -hmm. so you're polishing away Frederica yes um, <laughs> do you watch TV or do you just keep working or what do you do in the background while you're doing this at home <laughs> I watch TV. Oh, what's your favorite show? Um, just Let's make a deal and price <laughs> us right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Game shows. <laughs> well, that's my morning show. <laughs> and then my afternoon show is Judge Judy. Uh oh. <laughs> you gotta put that. You gotta put the hammer down yeah. on that one, right? <laughs> But right now, I'm, I've been watching basketball. Oh, everybody has. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's your favorite yeah. team? Well, my first team is the Warriors. Uh, Golden State. Golden State Warriors. And then my second team is um, Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Yeah. Your team is going to our team. Oh. You're from Sacramento. Oh. We still love you. Yeah, they won. Finally, last night, the Warriors won. What got you? Uh, what got you rooting for the Warriors? Um, I don't know. I think I just liked um, Steve, Steve Curry. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Curry's the best. Yeah. Yeah, and then on um, the Phoenix Suns, um, what's his name? Booker. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Booker, yeah. Booker. Yeah. <laughs> I love sports as well. <laughs> and then my football team, nobody likes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he he has a different team. Who do you like, Randy? The Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then he took all my grandkids with him too. <laughs> my my oldest grandson. When he was born, I would buy him like Dallas Cowboys jerseys and stuff like that. And, once he got bigger, he was like, why am I wearing these? When did I get these? <laughs> and you were telling your grandma was the one that bought them because she's, she's a Dallas Cowboys fan. So now he's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. <laughs> so how many grandkids do you have? I have four. And how old are they? Uh, the oldest one is 20. He'll be turning 21 on May 7th. And then my second granddaughter, she's 15. And I have a, my other grandson, he's 13. And then I have a young a little granddaughter, she's seven. Yeah. Do you have any people in your family who are taking on pottery making or following in your footsteps? No. And, uh, sorry I, to hear that. <laughs> I keep, I, I try we to try. Encourage, encourage them to. Mm -hmm. try, but, yeah. like, my grandson, you know, he, he tried it, but... He said he don't have the patience, and he said it's too hard. And my granddaughter, she she tried it, but she 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 don't have the patience either, cause she's a 
cross country runner and uh, track and field. Yeah. yeah. No. So the question was, is does she have any students? Um, and the answer was no. I'm just repeating because we're, we're here. If you, if you want, by all means, please come over here and talk into the mic. <laughs> so that will help us. No, I don't, I don't teach. They have, they have classes on the, they have classes on the reservation where they they do teach. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, okay. so, but nobody hasn't asked us to, um, do teach, but they right do. Right. They do have classes to make to make pottery and stuff like that. Yeah, they have all kinds of classes to make. Yeah, they they uh, um, belt making, belt making, moccasin uh, making, the clothing, the traditional oh, clothing. That's they good. they have That's classes good. like that over at the library. So, yeah. uh, are these classes open to the public, or are they for uh, Acoma Pueblo members? Sometimes they'll have one that's open to anybody. And then, but usually when it's back home, they're just usually just teaching just the kids, just the tribal member kids. But once in a while, they'll have a thing going on over there at the tourist center. So if people out there are interested, the place to contact is the tourist center. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So they, they sometimes, you know, do that where people pay to go learn and then they teach them. Yeah. Now your daughter... Is a cross country runner, so our, our granddaughter. Our granddaughter. That's like yeah. granddaughter. How old is she? Fifteen. She's fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. She's my, in high school. My, my daughter ran cross country. And mm. That's a great sport. I love yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun sport. Yeah. Well, she had surgery back in what, March. Yeah. February, March, on her ankle. Huh. So she was out for what four, three, four months. Ooh. But so, she's 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 back into it again. She's, she. <laughs> She, just, she went to therapy and whatever, and when she started walking again, then yeah, so she joined cross country and she's, she ran cross country. Yeah. So do you go out to all the cross country meets? <laughs> we usually yeah. do. You usually do. We right? usually do, and, and so then like fun. now it's the, um, track. the track and field meets. So. She has one tomorrow. At, they're hosting. They're in grants. They're hosting what, a. What distance does she run in track and field? Um, she runs the 3200. Ooh. Um, the 800 and yeah. something else. The 400, I think. 800 is a tough race. Yeah. The 3200, I think, is the hardest because they run eight laps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think she will do it? So, Maria, I have a question. This is Frederica. Out, out, Frederica, I'm sorry. Outside of sports. So, did you develop your love of art? at an early age because and the reason I asked that is because you said that you know you don't have anybody within your family that you can really pass down mm -hmm. your expertise and your artistic um, just your arch, arch, arch artery um, so um, so I guess you know were you like six or seven years old or something like that no I started life? I started um, doing make the pottery when I was like 18, yeah. So it was when um, I got married to him and his, his mom was the one that taught me how to make pottery. Yeah. Don't just sit around, make pottery, yeah. do something. <laughs> In-laws. Strong little mom. Yeah. I got the same kind. <laughs> yep, that's my mom too. <laughs> Yep, she'll tell you right out. So anyway, yeah, she started making pottery. Good, good, good for her. Yeah. So we do have one comment from online, uh, which is about uh, 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 Mr. Kurt, who is saying, I'm amazed about uh, your intricate painting. So I'm pretty sure uh, people are quite excited to see what you yeah. can do. <laughs> okay. But that's okay. Please polish away. Um, how many <laughs> times do you polish the piece? Just once or just once? Just once. Yeah, see, like I was saying, I don't know how long it would take her to polish the whole, the one, the one pot, but it, it takes, it takes a while, you know. And what's your favorite part about doing pots? Um, probably the painting. The painting? Yeah. How about you, Randy? What's your favorite part? <laughs> I just sit there and grind. 
<laughs> you know, they is, pe- going people and getting the clay or getting the paint. The oh, I love I, I love being or? out there. I love being out there getting the clay and stuff. You know, so people say, well, why don't you get a grinder? And I, well, what's this? You know, yeah. Wait, I, and part of it is doing it traditionally and doing it the old way and the hard way because that's how you were taught, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what it is, you know, and same thing, like I said with her, you know, why don't you buy paintbrushes? You can make your own paintbrushes. And in some ways, they probably work better. So you make your own paintbrushes, Frederica? Yes, I use the yucca. Mm-hmm. Yes. I chew it down to whatever the, how big the square is, and then that's how I um, fill in my... I didn't understand that. <laughs> um, and also we have another comment from online from Joan Joan says uh, that she loves your pottery and your design is so unique and your pots are gorgeous thank you <laughs> it's kind yeah, of nice she's, right she's the only one that started doing like that you know because there's no other other Akuma, Akuma that paints like that she just started doing her own style and and even even my mom has her own style, like usually like traditional, but it's she just started doing that and everybody liked it and that's just how she done it. And so what's really fascinating to me is that uh, every single potter has their own very unique style, and they're all so different and recognizable. Mm-hmm. However, the process for producing things that are so different is relatively similar all the way yes. through. And right. so what amazes me personally is how that with almost identical inputs that the product, the end product is so wildly different. And, <laughs> I, you know, that that to me is the fascinating part about pottery. Yeah. And so uh, what what is always fascinating to me is always the tools that everybody has. You know, they have buckets and paintbrushes and scissors. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the, sometimes it's their favorite baking sheet that they use or, <laughs> yeah. you know, or it's a spoon that bent and it turned out to be the best scraping That's spoon ever. That's how make the small pots is with the bent spoon, mm-hmm. you know, the, the soup spoons? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to push it out. <laughs> yeah, she uses a soup spoon just to, because the, they're that small, and she just puts that in there and just... So do you ever find yourself, like, driving down the side of the road and, like, suddenly pull over because you're like, what's that rock? How can I make that... That color is really cool, you well, know? Well, like, that's, down, going down that, by La Bajada, that's saw that red uh, paint. Mm, that's that one. So that's how that was found. I, yeah. I've been for what thirty some years. I've tried to have been looking for like like blue or green mm-hmm. or purple. It's not there. It's not. There are a few families that have found some very interesting colors by driving around, but I do know I that don't they, don't, so. they don't they don't share very. I don't, don't think so. I don't think it's. I don't think it's out there. Okay. From me. Yeah. From from what I all the stuff I found and it's so not I have, there. I have it's, seen it's on not, Akuma pots a, a bluish color. It's, it's not, bluish. It's but not they there. showed me what it was made out of and it is things that are findable. So there are <laughs> some, there are some colors that are out there um, that have been found and of course the families keep it very, very hush hush as yeah. to where they find it. Yeah. But um, they did show me a firing and so I did see it go from the raw yeah. material, which was definitely something raw and found. To the fire end product, and it did you come know how out they, a very you know blue, how they have a very these, light um, gray blue color. You know how they have these mineral shows. Yep, I've been to those too. Okay. And this one man, he goes, he goes. I've been selling these to the Akuma ladies. Oh, interesting. And this, this is what, what they've been using. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, sell me some. So I, I bought some. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I tried it, they all came out brown. Interesting. I have seen a brown color before. <laughs> <laughs> we made our own brown. Yep. Yeah, we, we have brown. But don't you think but it's different? I, I really thought that it was natural blue or green. 
And I I found green green sand and blue blue rocks and stuff, but it it, work. it just don't work. Mm -hmm. I've I've been looking like I said for what thirty thirty some years. And well, the color that I saw was definitely not blue when it started. Uh -huh. It was a it was almost red when it started. Yeah. So, so there's some know. sort of chemical reaction when it fires that changes <laughs> the color. So it, I mean, I'm I'm not saying that it. it I know, but I don't want to. I don't want to say nothing either. Like yeah. you know, like it's not real. But I mean, I don't know. It's just that I've never found it. So, yep. so Randy, I was curious. How uh, so? As you found these different colors, were there periods where you you're just adding one, like every couple of years when you discover it, like you discover the location? Uh -huh. So have have Frederica's pots gotten more colorful over the years? Yeah. Like I said, these the ones that she uses right here, these are just found right right below the mesa, right 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 below the mesa akuma sitting there. And these these oh, like the pink and the yellow and the this one comes out pink too, and but that's red. And then the the only one we have is, is the 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 dark red, that one. Mm -hmm. That one we get at um going down by uh what is that? By the Kochiri exit. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the one right here. Yeah, they were doing all that digging. Did you see like they were doing all that repair on that road? So yeah. All this red earth. Like, yeah. Up. Yeah, but like I said, I just go back to the ones that I know. Where but I've been I've been looking for stuff. We we went out to the what is that? The painted desert. Yeah. We were out there days, never found nothing that worked everything got either came out brown or like like a like a gray color yeah so i i I've, I've been looking i've been looking for so i don't think it's like i said i've been to the mineral shows too so i've gotten stuff from there too Those but mineral shows are they minerals from all over the united states yeah Canada, yeah you still haven't seen anything no no. So it's like that's a good select yeah. population. That yeah, yeah. We went went we went to one in Arizona, and you know I thought it was they had really green stuff then, but it never never turned, never turned so out. I have another nice comment from online saying history is being made, so it's fun to see all these things. Happen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 Nice. Hey, no. <laughs> this is why they do not let you touch it. Yeah. <laughs> Usually that's me. <laughs> so I've, like I've, I've broken like three pottery here at Indian Market when they have Indian Market. Yes. I've, I've broken like three here. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so in, anyway, yeah, it's just. So, I mean, she has her own style. That's just all it all it is. And there's there's an article about her on the on the internet. It's the Santa Fe New Mexican. They did an article on her because um, at one point she was going blind on one side. On on her eye, yeah, she was going blind. And so. Right away, they sent her to go get an MRI, yeah. and it, she had a tumor on the oh, on the pituitary gland, yes. and that's right in back of the eyes. Yes. So the tumor was big enough to where it was on her um, the optic nerve. Yes. Yeah. So that's what was causing it. So. Yeah. So. You know, I used to, I used to work uh, as a chemist, but the way I made my living, I worked in aerospace and mm -hmm. for the guy who was really a really good chemist. You're talking about tools. And he, he was kind of a quirky guy, but he would have like like bent uh, paper clips that he used in certain type of analysis he did, and, and you could not touch his tools because <laughs> <laughs> people would want because he was kind of really uh, messy, real eccentric and messy. Yeah. And people would want to go, "Well, you got to clean this up," and, and he would freak out. Just don't, don't, don't touch this. Don't touch this. It was a paper clip. Looked like that. I didn't touch it, Greg. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> These are your tools. You know? I'm not going to do anything with them. <laughs>
So for yeah, well, they do have tools, you know, to, I mean, the tumor was in back of her eyes, you yeah. know. Yeah. So they went under her, under her, they lifted up her lip, yeah. and they went under her nose, oh. and then, you know, where the nose curves like this, yeah. they went through there, right to the, where the tumor was in back of her eyes, and that's how they got it out, you know, with those little, um... I don't know what they were, but they had that little camera in there, yes, and it was yes. just breaking it up and taking the little pieces of that tumor out. Good. Yeah. So it's so wonderful that that worked. Yeah. Oh yeah. Out. Yeah. Out. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Question for you, Fred. While Frederica is working, um, <laughs> do you always start at the top of the piece? Yeah. It is there a reason? Mm. No. Or is it just because it's the way it's you've always done I've it? I've always, I always started from the top. Okay. Yeah. And so you start by going around the top edge. Yes, I start going all the way around. Then after I do all the going around, then I start coming down. Okay. Yeah. Were you interested in geometry in school? <laughs> No. That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> no. No. I didn't like school. <laughs> were you interested in school when you were in school? <laughs> no. I wasn't. They always look. They always look for me. <laughs> yeah. Back then, on the reservation, if you don't go to school, they bring these these guys come out and they look for you. <laughs> so you run out of the house and you run up the hill and they'll come around chasing yeah. after you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was back then in the day, you know. Yeah, they can't afford the, those anymore. On so. the reservation. <laughs> yeah. So Frederica, when you first started making these really, really beautiful sort of, yeah, woven almost mm -hmm. designs. What were people's response? Were people like, was anyone upset that you were doing something kind of different? Or mm, no. did people, were they excited? Yeah, yeah, they were excited. Yeah. But the, always, the question they always ask me is, do you ever go blind doing this? Yeah. Or they'll say, um, do you do this by computer? <laughs> those are good questions. Yeah, those are the, the yeah. two questions those, that they yeah. always ask me. Yeah. Yeah. We've actually gotten that. There people, I've, I remember this one One uh, person was like, oh, these are done by a computer, right? And I was like, no. I was like, <laughs> no, they definitely are. I think you're lying to me. Yeah. And so I had to sit him down and explain. <laughs> Each line. I know I, I'll, I'll, I'll get a pottery and I'll pick out one line and then I tell them she paints one line all the way down and I'll show them. And then the next one, the next line, you know, and there was this one man, and he was looking at it, and he said, I wonder if you peeled off each line and laid them end to end. I wonder how far you'll go. Long ways. <laughs> I wonder how many miles of lines she's painted, you know. Yeah, but he was like a math guy, so. He was a math Yeah, math. Math? Yeah. He was <laughs> just amazed, I don't know. You know, one, one of the forms that I think um, that I've really only seen you do is, is what you call the infinity. Oh, yeah. The infinity forms. Do you want to talk a little bit about how, uh, how that form came to you or how you, uh, you decided to start making those now? Oh, okay. Well, it's kind of like a funny... <laughs> anyway, the, it was like, um, it was raining and then it gets humid. So when it was kind of still wet, mm. I had put the pot upside down like this. Mm -hmm. And then when it, when I had came back, it was the the top part was in. Mm. So, and then I just I told him I'm gonna leave it like this. I said, look at it, it kind of went in. So I just right. kind of pushed it down a little bit, and then that's when I mm. just formed it like that. That's so, beautiful. 
So kind of a lovely accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a gift. And yeah. we didn't know that there was pottery like that. I don't know if you saw that one, like on King Gallery, he had an old... Oh, it was an old one like It that. was the old one that was house oh. in like that. I haven't seen that one. No? I'll yeah, so anyway, it. but I mean, that it just came out like that, and oh. so now she just... What is old is new again, no? Yeah. So somebody already had maybe done the same thing. <laughs> it was, it <laughs> left was their pot. one night, and they left it upside down. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So generally, Frederica, um, with the piece the size you're working on now, how long does uh, does the painting take from start to finish? This will probably take me about a week. Why? Wow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, because I have to line each one going around and coming down. Yeah. And then, of course, I have to take my granddaughter and pick her up from practice. Oh, and we're always right. doing we're stuff. We're always doing you know. stuff with our our of grandkids, course. like. Picking her up, going, taking her Practice. here, taking her there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And I believe that that's part of the reason that uh, no artist can really tell us why, how long a pot takes. Is yeah. We're, you're artists. You're not timekeepers. Right? You, you don't need to punch a time clock to remind yourself, nope. like, hey, I need to paint now for a little while. You just kind of do it, and you go for it, and you put it down, or you have many pieces that you're working on at the same time. She has, what, one that's sitting at the house? Yeah. She has one sitting at the house that's, like, halfway then. Yeah? Yeah. And then she'll work on that one, then she'll come back, and she'll start another one, then she'll just go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's my understanding from doing all of these demos oh, in yeah. the past is that no artist keeps track of how much time that they spend on any one piece. Yeah. And so it's, it's a really, really tough question to get any solid, confirmed kind of answer. Um, the best way to sort of measure if there is... Um, uh, if, if, if you do want to find out is to dig and clean and grind the clay all for one batch of pots and do <laughs> one batch of pots start to finish and then kind of divide out the time when the pieces are all finished. Uh, that's the only way that I kind of know how to calculate what that is, but it's never accurate or correct because some pieces... Maybe we should mm -hmm. just get a, um, one of those time clocks. Yeah, and just start punching when, it. Yeah, when, you, when you're finished and <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you actually have one on your phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So you can time your granddaughter's Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a really hard question. And, you know, sometimes the clay fights you. Oh, um, yeah. And, you know, yeah. You, no matter how hard you try on something or the harder you try, the more it wants to go against your will. Right. Um, and so it's it's a very subjective answer to a very simple question that's that's like like sometimes you can make one just you can just make it and it'll be done and sometimes they'll sit there and it just won't go so that's yeah that's that's true i guess with everybody yeah it's t it's a tough thing yeah and you know the the clay dictates what's going to happen you know? the weather the weather. So yeah. how does the weather affect you in making and painting? Um, it just mostly affects when you're making pottery. Like if it's, if, if, it's, if, it, if, it's, if it's too dry, then they just get dry right away before you even finish shaping it. Mm -hmm. And then when, if it's like humid or if it's raining, then they take forever to dry. And yeah. if what happens, how do you keep, get them to dry evenly? Oh, it looks like you just got an exacto blade. What's going on there? <laughs> I kind of made a wrong turn. <laughs> so, so what do you do when you get when you do make a wrong turn? I use the exacto blade to scratch it off. Oh, so you just scratch it off, and then you can continue on. And then she she usually just. Um, I usually use my nail. And then. Or her nail just to like repolish it, mm -hmm. or or she'll has has the polishing stone where she'll just. And how often it. do you make mistakes on pots? Not often. Not often. <laughs> Only when you're here. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
when everybody's watching it. <laughs> we were doing a demonstration over there at the museum, and I had a whole pan of clay, and I was, everybody was, uh, I was just letting everybody grind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, they were everybody wanted to grind, so I was just saying, uh, "Oh, go ahead, go for it. You guys can grind all you want." I said. <laughs> well, it's good for them too. Yeah, and this, this one guy was all, you know, like he was all, he was all going for it. I told him just relax and just yeah, just he was all, oh okay. <laughs> He was all over there. No, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself doing that. My daughter, when she was in high school, she was a pretty good artist. But what you said, Frederica, sometimes you're just not in the mood. That's what she would do. She was painting. And I said, so why don't you finish it? Girl? Not in the mood. <laughs> she said, the mood's been honest. Yeah. It's not right. It's got to wait. Yeah. And then, then when she got in the mood or... Mentally prepared, then she'd come back and do it. If it wasn't yeah. Great, I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. It's just art, I think. Yeah. Frederica, I have one question. I noticed on the pot that you're starting to paint that you already have the design. Um, it's just like in, a, a in grid, there. like a. So, how do you, what tool do you use to create that, that design or that indentation that you're going to then paint from? Pencil? Oh, okay. It's just a pencil, yeah. And do the pencil lines stay on after you fire the piece? No. No. No, it comes off. Well, the paint's over it, so... I don't know if it's actually there or not, but... And when you start painting a piece, do you know what you're going to put on it design-wise? No. Or do you, do you have an idea in your head? Or no, how does that I, work? I just have to finish um, making all the small squares. And after I do the small squares, then, then that's when I figure out what I'm going to what I'm gonna put on it. Or if I'm going to put color on it. Or if I'm just going to leave it black and white. So... Uh, she never got into Indian market, but she was always that. That's the main thing she did when she was uh, at home was do pottery. My dad was working at the mines and grants, but she always did pottery too. That was her job, I guess. But. That, yeah, she sold, she sold pottery. So there, she has a lot of pottery out there, too. Yeah. So, Frederica, how long can you get uh, use out of one of those brushes that you make before you have to do a new one? How long? Mm -hmm. um, I thought I could use it for about a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have three of them in there already. Oh, nice. So that'll, that so that'll keep you going yeah. through this pot, maybe. Seeing how painstaking you are in applying this uh, this this paint to the to the pot, I'm uh, kind of overwhelmed looking at the finished product. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of all the attention you pay. I know I should have brought. I should have already done one that yeah. was already at squares mm. to where I could just start filling it in oh no it's yeah. yeah well it's it's just wonderful to watch you watch you work you have such a careful hand and um, I think one thing that people people often remark to me is you know I just the utter disbelief that people yeah. come, come to me with when yeah. seeing these pieces especially that they're built by hands and then that the design is you know scaled over the course of this three-dimensional shape is just I, I mean I can barely I can barely write my name on a good day, <laughs> so I'm 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 consistently humbled by your work. Um, you know, you brought us some new new shapes recently. Uh, this one with the lid. Oh yeah. Do you think you could uh, 
uh, tell me a little bit about what, uh, what kind of inspired you to try that, try that format, if there was something in particular. Um, well, I was uh, sitting there one day, I was watching TV, and then that, um, what is that, um, that mortuary, that, um, uh, I don't know what it is. French's Mortuary. Oh, okay. And it came on and it showed the urns. Oh. So, oh, wow. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if you if you can if you make an urn oh, with wow. so. So not a cookie jar then. Okay. <laughs> so he said, um, I wonder if you can make an urn. I can make an urn. <laughs> well, I mean. You know, if you got to go, it wouldn't be a bad, a bad place to hang out. Is that one? <laughs> it's a beautiful piece. Wow. wow. I love that. So, so yeah, so you're, you're quite uh, sensitive to trying new things out. Yeah. A little inspiration when it comes. <laughs> yeah, she's her own, I don't know what to say, but... It's true. I don't, you know, yeah, I don't think I, there's no one who I, I even... Uh, you're in such your own kind of uh, your own school or your own your own camp. It's quite impressive. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I'll say that next time. She's in her own camp. <laughs> That's true. You're the captain of your own ship. <laughs> Randy, there's your. Uh, Swabby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you were when you were starting out, Federica, were you doing more um, sort of traditional acoma designs before you started um, in this way? Well, when I first first started doing pottery, I used to do um, ceramics. Okay. So after when his mom told me to start making uh, traditional pottery, then that's when I started making. Traditional. And ever since then, then I've never done ceramic. I've always done the yeah. traditional. That's beautiful. Traditional pottery. Nice. Yeah. So um, you just go to the ceramic shop and they're already um, pre-made pots that are they're they're called greenware. Yeah. So they're already they're already made, and then all you have to do is clean them and and paint them. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the traditional clay. Did that one break up in pieces? It probably did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, when the clay comes out of the, the clay mine, it's it's like this. And then once you wet it, see she wet these ones, and it just all it just all falls apart. You know, it just comes down to this. See this? It just, it seems like it's hard, but when once water gets to it, it's just, Dissolves. yeah. Now the clay mine, the clay mine is where you're yes. Yeah, it's, it? it's over there by Akuma, by the Mesa. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it, there's, they, they made a road there one time, but um, people didn't want that road there, so they shut it down. So you have to walk and get the clay. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it's about a mile. So you have to mine it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, see, it just all breaks down into that. Yeah. Everybody likes the smell of the clay. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting smell. It really is. Yeah. My yeah. grandkids, they like to eat the clay. They like to eat that it. That is actually something that we've heard many yeah. times over is lots of people like to eat the clay. You can smell the clay. Really? It's just... Yeah. Mm. That smells good. <laughs> <laughs> I had some the other week. I think it was good for my blood. <laughs> <laughs> I felt stronger after. Yeah, some people actually eat it, so... That's interesting. But like I said, it's it comes in even bigger chunks than this, but no, that's... Do they, do they eat it because Both, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Some people say it makes them feel better, and some of them. Yeah. 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 Hi. <laughs> That's stout. 
Pissed out. I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna paint. He heard, he heard people were eating clay and he's like, oh, let me yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to say, it's pretty good. Is it? Just took a little back, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's people that actually ask for some, huh? Yeah, oh, some yeah. Clay, it's, you know. it's good in coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I have a breakfast burrito, please? Not red, not green, but clay, please. <laughs> no, just red. Just red clay. Just red clay. <laughs> yep, so they, uh, they ask us for some clay to eat. Oh, man, I don't even know. So a nice comment from online is what a beautiful urn. The design is gorgeous. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cookie jar urn. Yeah, so what do you urn. think about how long they've been making pots at Akuma? Well, um... That's what he was asking. So, um... So going back... Pots used to be extremely functional, right? You would you would make them to make your dough in for bread, or you would make them to carry your water in because the only way to get the water from wherever it needed is to carry it. And so pots were very functional. So they served a function many, many, many years ago. And the Mimbris people who were from Chaco Canyon area and the people who preceded whoever lived at Acoma have all been making pots for generations into the past. Um, and the answer is, is certain groups and cultures died out and some moved to other places and the languages and the traditions moved with those places. So in my opinion from Acoma Pueblo they have probably been making pots since the very first day they were there and it was probably a tradition that was brought from somewhere else uh, to Acoma and now so when was that very first day they were there 100 years ago or that's actually a good question. There's a, yeah. there's a lot of debate about that question. Yeah, right. And uh, right now, there are two Pueblos right now that claim to be the oldest, and one is Acoma <laughs> and the other is Taos. Now, whether either of those are correct, I have absolutely no idea. Um, but that's what the current debate is. Yeah. Uh, Taos is uh, considered the oldest continually inhabited Pueblo, but that's because... Acoma people have pretty much moved off the mesa. So, but it is arguable either way. Yeah. And there is no, nobody really knows the answer because there's no written history. So oh, that, it's, well, it's, a, it's difficult to... so it's all oral history. And so yeah. one group will say one thing and another group will say another yeah. thing. It's really <laughs> tough to prove yeah, one is true and one is not true. Yeah. But that's not the goal to prove oh, that yeah. one is true or one is not yeah. true. It's to appreciate one another. Yeah. So, and yeah. every single potter who is in here does things extremely differently, but there is no one potter that is, you know, the master of masters, so to speak. But, you know, everybody is their own master, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think there's such a, such a very, like, local kind of quality to each work because you're finding all the materials where you live so that it's like mastering the relationship between yourself or, or becoming increasingly sensitive between the relationship of the materials and yourself and how to make it, how to bring that forward. Yeah. I, I love that about, yeah. about the work. There's a, the competition, competition is maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Although at the same time, there are some exciting competitions. Yeah. Well, you probably feed off of that competition too. You see some, oh, there's an interesting one applied to my airport too. You do see these kind of little, um, I don't know, I guess I, real or imagined for, for my, for my sure. position, but you see people kind of like upping the ante, you know, some, sometimes sure. you get, I think this is a, probably one of those like basic truths of, of artists. Of art? In yeah. Music? Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 
but there's also steep tradition that, you, in, in, that is in there as well. And so breaking those traditions is something that is not cool or allowed. It, it, because, for instance, if a potter or a weaver or something puts a design on a piece that is not deemed appropriate by the elders for whatever reason. Right. Um, it could be, you know, the, the design belongs to somebody else or another group or the design is too different or too stylized from the normal. The elders can effectively eject the people from the Pueblo. No kidding. And Ooh, that's harsh. That is harsh. <laughs> and so because we're working in a traditional sense, there are lines that are drawn sure, in yeah. the sand. Yeah. A good example for us white guys uh, that I usually give is, you know, a Star of David is a symbol for religion. Um, if an artist were to paint an extra point on the Star of David, You're the right. religion would not be happy about it. <laughs> right? And so there are rules. Those rules are variable depending on each Pueblo and how each council of elders feels at any given time. And so sometimes the rules can be very strict, sometimes they can be very loose, yeah. um, but there are rules, but it's really hard to know what they are. <laughs> Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do know of some people that have uh, been removed as Pueblo members for... Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Four instances that uh, we just spoke of. Well, yeah. You probably think you got to protect the culture. Uh, yeah, or... Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't try to know what other That's people right. are yeah. thinking yeah. at the time because yeah, I don't I pretend to, to know what that is. Yeah. And then the stuff they're making these days. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, See? personally, I think, I mean, greenware is a really good example. It's yeah. a great means for artists to learn how to paint right. because it's hard to make on your own. Yeah. Um, it is a functional thing at times because uh, if you ever go to a, a funeral at Acoma Pueblo, the, one of the things that you do is you break pots over the, the grave of uh, who is recently deceased. And um, you don't want to spend how many hours grinding clay and <laughs> how many hours forming the pots and drying the pots and tempering the clay with pottery shards and everything else that you need yeah. to do with it. Yeah. It's In some ways, that has become somewhat traditional. Yeah. However, it is not a traditional thing in it, in it of itself. So it's a it's a it's a strange but interesting thing where traditional is sometimes traditional, but not always traditional. But in this case, it is. But in this case, it isn't. So um, there's there's no real set of rules, and those rules are somewhat flexible depending on who's in charge. You brought up a term, tempering the clay. Yes. Do you temper the clay? We used to. Yeah. We used to add the temper into the clay uh -huh. because the clay was more, um, you had to add it in. But now now this this clay that's coming out of the clay mine, it don't need the temper oh, anymore. It's yeah. kind of, it's kind of like sandy. So it, it's not. You don't need the temper. Yeah. But the old clay that used to come out of the main, the main mine, mm -hmm. it was like real where you had to add the temper into it. So yeah. And but what, this new clay, we don't, we don't add. And what temper is is generally old pottery shards that are ground back up again and added back into the clay, yeah. just a little. Yeah. Every family has its own recipe. Right. Right. And the recipes are kept, you know, it's it's a pinch of this, a pinch of that sure. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, each time somebody will experiment and they may find something new or different that's happening depending on where they're getting the clay from at the moment. Mm -hmm. And it changes. Mm -hmm. So you, when you did used to temper the clay, you were grinding up pottery shards? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. I would go out, you know, gathering from the old... Just from like around the mesa or somewhere, you know, just where there's, yeah, where there's pottery shards. Yeah. 
And just as a reminder for us white guys who are out there, <laughs> gathering pottery shards is not a good thing. Right. right. <laughs> it's against the rules. <laughs> yeah, even for us now, mm -hmm. if you go out, you have to go on the reservation because it's okay on the reservation, but if you're out somewhere, you, you'll get caught. Yep. Well, yeah. public lands belong to everyone right. equally in this country. Right. And so taking something from public lands is, is something that is not okay. Yeah. Um, and I completely understand the theory behind it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So, do you have to put down the pots for a little bit, Frederica, yes. and stop painting? Because my neck gets your, oh, it's your neck, neck, not your it's eyes. Not your <laughs> no, okay. it's my neck. It's your neck. Yeah. So, is Randy good at neck rubs? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's good at grinding the clay. That yeah. saves you a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so. Right now, you were able to do, what is that, five lines? Four yeah. lines. <laughs> yep. So it gives people a really good idea about yeah. how much effort goes into painting each and every one of these pieces. I don't think she's into painting right now because she would have already been, you know, been she sits there and sometimes she'll just be painting and painting, but I don't know why it's taking her long. Because I sit on a recliner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a different position oh, where you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So I hope the chair's relatively yeah, comfortable. It's good. Now, do you, do you two, do you live on, on, in the Pueblo? Do you live in the Pueblo? No. You're um, there's like villages that are off from the Pueblo. Yeah. The Pueblo is sitting there on the Mesa, but we live in the, like in McCarty Village. It's okay. called McCarty Village. Okay. Yeah. There's different different villages. It's an Irish name, but the railroad when the railroad came through, the the man that used to run the railroad through there, he was Irish. His name was McCarty's. So, but that's where we live. Yeah, that's where the name came from, McCarty's. Yeah. No, getting back to your. I like cross country running. It, your, your, your granddaughter is it a local high school? Um, there's, high there's two high schools there. There's one in Grants, mm -hmm. and then there's one at Laguna, which is another Pueblo. Yes. Laguna. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but she goes to Grants, and there's more. Laguna is. Where there, there's not a lot of students, so it's like a 2A. And then grants, there's more students, so it's 4A. Yeah, yeah so they have, more, they have more competition in the 4A. Like when they go to... Yeah, yeah, there's, there's more 4A schools, I think, than 2A schools. Yeah. You see it when you go to the meet, you know, like 4A, they'll just run 4A by themselves, yeah. and there's like, what, 200 runners? But like when you see the 2A, they run with the 1A, they run together and they'll only have like 100 runners or so, but then when, they, when the 4A runs by themselves, there'll be like 200, 200 runners. So... So much camaraderie. Yeah. Play basketball. Yeah. Cross country, it's like yeah. Everybody. Oh yeah. The person yeah. comes in last. Yeah. I used to find that so. Oh yeah. 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 So it looks like you do a bigger line first, and then you go back and you do an yeah. in between. Yes. It takes forever. The paper's is only that big. <laughs> now the term Pueblo, to get off the subject part, is that a Southwest for uh, indigenous peoples? I used to go fishing. Uh -huh. For salmon fishing and steelhead fishing up in Washington. 
I think it's a Spanish Spanish oh, okay. term. Yeah. So it's like, a, like Pueblo is the Spanish word for village. Yeah, there you, you go. What it is, so, so you don't have a Pueblo in Wisconsin or Minnesota or anything. No. Not, uh, not unless they're speaking Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was from. That's where I was born. From. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's a Spanish. It's Spanish. It's it's more or less, as I understand it, the same thing. Um, there's there's a yeah, I I remember hearing at one point, although I'm a little hazy on it, that the distinction between I mean reservation I think is the is the term ultimately, um, but the pueblo describes a kind of you know um, relationship to the lands that is also more agrarian. Right, oh, because the Pueblo yeah. cultures, uh, right. they're, right. they're, they're, they have a... It's starting to come back now. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, the Plains peoples, like, were somewhat nomadic. And so they didn't... Even like a couple of the Yakima reservation is like fishing. Because it's right next to the ocean. You know, Yeah, I, I guess my understanding is partly, yeah, informed by that sort of um, sedentary, yeah. a certain sedentary lifestyle or culture. Do you ever watch Family Feud while you're working? No. <laughs> <laughs> we do that on our own. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just too, it's too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own Family Feud. <laughs> <over there. laughs> yeah, I have to say, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Cowboys joke? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, I learned this one. I learned this one from a big Cowboys fan called Sonny, uh, who who lives at the at the facility where my dad is at, and uh, so he goes, uh, you know, so there's one day, it's like uh, there's uh, there's two parents and a kid, and they're in the courtroom, and the parents are gonna get divorced. And so the judge says to the kid, okay, you have to decide, do you wanna, do you wanna live with your mother or your father? He says, I don't know, I don't wanna live with my, my mom because she, she hits me, <laughs> she beats me. <laughs> and I don't wanna live with my dad because he, also he beats me too. And the judge goes, oh geez, well, so who, well, you gotta decide though, who do you wanna live with? He says, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, because they don't beat no one. <laughs> all jokes, all jokes. through a thing too with this one man I don't know if you've seen his stuff on the internet but he's been uh, but he does with the wood turning mm. have you seen it? It was like wooden vessels and jars. They're, you're, they're made out of wood. I have seen But he's doing her Is her he borrowing designs. a little bit? No? Yeah so we were kind of going through that too like back at the Pueblo mm -hmm. and the governor and uh, all the lawyers and stuff were trying to but hmm. I don't know whatever happened with it but they were supposed to get back with us but they never did uh, but they were trying he's still, to he's still, he's still doing it he's still doing it yeah, yeah. Uh, but they said that they couldn't do anything because he, he's, he's putting on there that they're inspired by Federica Antonio original. So I don't know. Yeah. Whatever happened with that. Got to get on Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Let her sort it yeah. out. <laughs> yes, but anyway, 
justice reign. I don't know. Oh, these yeah. ones right here. Yeah, see, they're then done. You just put it just okay. Yeah, they're they're made out of wood. But they're the same. Mm hmm So, so he's just saying, well, it's inspired by it. Yeah. And she probably doesn't have a trademark or. No, uh, -uh. Yeah. there's they said there's no way you can do on. If you do, you have to do one on each pot because each pot is different. Yeah, it's complicated. So you well, have to. Patent law. I used to deal with that. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big in the chemical business. Yeah. Patents is what cuts all out. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have that patent. Yeah. Someone's gonna take it. Yeah. And there's ways of working around it. It's real complicated. Yeah, so. Yeah. They had the lawyers and stuff, but like I said, we never, they never got back to us, or I don't know whatever happened, or, but that was a big thing that we were going through, too, about that, but. <laughs> yeah. It's that expression, uh, uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I respect you tremendously. <laughs> Second of all, this is mine now. <laughs> yeah, but that's what it came down to was, you know, the patent and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. It's really complicated. So they said you would have to do one pot and put a copyright on it and then the next one again, the same thing again. Yeah, since each one's different. So, so Frederica, this this uh, the the pigment that you're using now it dries before you go all the way around. Yeah, it so does. You can keep, yeah, yeah. So it dries pretty quick. Yeah, huh? it does. Yeah. And, and also it, it, on the rock too, it also dries. So you have fast. to kind of yeah, keep, so keep, keep adding keep waters in, to it. Water in it. Yeah. Cool. Yes. I think I need to take a break. Take a break. Okay, we're going to take a couple minutes, folks, and uh, we'll be right back.
students are learning it. What you do. No, uh uh. That's kind of sad, don't you think? Yeah, um. Like being a mentor? Yeah, I try to get my grandkids to. Yeah, but not everybody could do yeah. this. I don't think I could do it. I, don't, I wouldn't have the patience. <laughs> yeah. To I could do what your husband is doing. Because that's the type of stuff that I used to do. Uh huh. As yeah. But that, my daughter could do that. Mm -hmm. But you're doing right. She oh. could do that. But yeah. She is, I was telling you, I don't know if you were she makes, uh, she studied geology in mm -hmm. college, but she made maps, geological oh. maps, which are very, very uh -huh. precise. Mm -hmm. And she just, like you, just yeah. probably get into a zone and just do it. Yeah. When, I, when I'm at home, I, I just sit and just keep painting. Like you said, I would have probably been like half ways, but. Yeah. This is probably hard for you to do this way. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Demonstration. Yeah, it's hard when you do a demonstration because you're not at your, your regular place. And you got people. Yeah, all over. Yeah, for sure. And it's taking all. I'm glad we were able to watch you do it. Was that your wife? That was what you are. Yes. Hmm? Was, was she? Was that your wife? That was what you? Yes. Oh. That's my wife. Yeah. Yep. She's over there talking. Oh. Do you ever uh, keep the pots that you make, or do you have a little pottery collection of? The only ones that? I keep are the ones that are cracked or broken. Ah, uh, so. <laughs> Those are the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make any money on no. those. <laughs> Did you guys sell that other pot? Yeah. That hat, um. Remember the one that I brought in? That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. You guys sold down? So, yeah. mm -hmm. This reminds me of the company I work for. Get you anything? Do you want a coffee or nothing? Or no, mm -mm. I I have some water. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna let you work for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I, don't, I won't bother you with any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> any more jokes? Yeah. No more. No more jokes about the. The honorable Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get um, a lot of comments from that. <laughs> Those people that live in Dallas. Yeah, to be clear, oh, some rabid fans oh, down Texas. we love we love uh, we love the love of the game here at Andrea Fisher.
Games, you know, if you see on TV, that's the way it is in that stadium. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean you walk out and you can't see it. No. <laughs> you kind of go deaf and say, you know, big pop coats are killing it. Yeah. Probably dangerous. <laughs> well, Frederica, we get to take off. Okay, really thank nice you. Meeting. Nice thank meeting you. you. Nice you talking to you. Uh -huh. really it. Yeah. Well, enjoy your the rest of your day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, we will. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Randy, I'll see you. Nice to talk with you. Yeah. Nice to talk with you. Take care. Yeah.
Yeah, no, I hear it. Thank you. I've been kind of like. Hi, I'm doing fine. Do you mind at the museum? Oh, yeah, you're talking to my husband. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was my, my roommate. Yeah, and then my roommate called her. Oh. So I, um, I got a source of seeds, heirloom seeds for the for the uh, bee plant. Oh, for the... Yeah. yeah. So who should I talk to to get in touch, you know, so that we can donate the seeds or help you guys plant them? Um, what was that guy's name? Remember he does with the seeds out there? Aaron Loudon. Aaron Loudon from the Pueblo. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll get a piece of paper so you can write down his name because I'll forget. Okay. By the time yeah. I get to the car. <laughs> but yeah, and I went to um, Arizona and met some potters there. Uh huh. And I got a whole bag of the seeds too. Oh, okay, yeah. Just gonna spread them all over the place. Yeah, right? I was, I was, that's what I was telling them here. That it's hard to get a hold of. You know, I've been looking for a, a rock that size. Oh. I found some mica in an arroyo. Uh huh. So, you know, processing. Grinding that up, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. What do you use for temper? Um, the volcanic? I used to use just the old potteries or, uh -huh, or potteries that, you know, that crack and I would grind them back up. But right now, I'm not, I'm not adding any temper to this clay. Because it's nice and soft already? It's already there. Temperized. The, yeah, the, it's, it's not real, like, it's sticky, like, you could just tell when it's real clay so, and real sticky, uh -huh. but this one is already kind of sandy, this is the, from the new, the new mine where they, where it's coming out from, right. it's like the, it's, like I said, like this, this is how you find it, like this is how you harvest it, yeah, okay, yeah. it's like slaked, yeah, cool. this is hard, <laughs> yeah, like I said, and then like, see, it's like, like that, you know. Okay. But when you when you soak it in water, okay. it just turns to that. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's what we're everybody wanted to eat it because the way it smells. It smells sweet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So. But you know, eating clay can be healthy. Yeah, that's what <laughs> that's what they were saying. Everybody South was talking America about that. Yeah. So, that's but. So that's the way the clay is now, okay. where we don't have to add temper. Perfect. Yeah. So. Oh, I know. I'm yeah. Like I'm just amazed. This is all hand painted. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, just it's been. Yeah. I um, this is all our our natural pigment you paints that we use on there. Uh huh. And then I use the the natural pigment that we use on the natural pigment that we use on there. Uh huh. And then I use the this is the yucca, and I chew it down to fibers, and uh -huh. this is the the fine lines. Uh huh. And I chew it down to fibers, and this is the the fine lines. That I, uh, I used to make all the fine lines. I used this. Okay. And the paint on here is the oh, bee weed. Oh, still looking at the. So you lay out a grid. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and then I just start painting, going around first, making the lines, and then I'm gonna do another line that goes in the middle of this. Uh huh. So it it will come out all to nothing but little small squares. Uh -huh. Then after I do all that, then I'll be putting the patterns, the pattern on there. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this one is the um, is the white slip, and that's what I put on the on this before I start painting. And then this these are all the paints that I use, and mm -hmm. um, this is what they come out from. These are the sandstone, the sandstone uh -huh. that we just soak into the water. And then these are this my the polishing stones that I use, oh. and I yeah. polish the pot to make it shiny. Okay. And then these are the um, the bee bee the bee wheat um, plant that we um, we boil, and then that's what the paint is made with. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And these are yeah, all he my, he's the one that works with the seed. <laughs> well, he's a seed caretaker yeah. or whatever, but yeah. So that's what but I yeah. used to make on my fine lines, and this is the paint the paint brushes that I used to. And those, that's all my work right there. It's amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Can you get my glasses? I can't bend down.
What time is it? I need to check the Do time. Do you guys have cooking pots at home? I always wonder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, but they don't. You don't. They don't have no design on them. They're just no. yeah, uh, regular. Just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just, oh, wow, what I do is I just use my fingers. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I go like this way, then I mark yeah. one, then I mark, and then I just go the other way. And then what I use to make my lines um, coming down is I use my finger. So I mark it right here, and then I mark it right here, and then I mark it right here, yeah. Then just same thing, just mark it right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah. So, How long have you been doing it? Um, I've been doing it for like 30 plus years. I started when I was 18 years old, and I'm 53. Do you remember what the first ones looked like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We stopped in Zuni, uh -huh. and I, it was a place all, all tribes... Right? Huh. And I asked him if he had anything by new artists. Uh -huh. He goes, no. And he goes, it takes 20 to 30 years to get good work. You know? Yeah. A lot of practice. The designs are just amazing. Mm, yeah, those are, those are all my, my designs. Um, we're from the Pueblo of Akuma, and nobody else does this, this, these patterns. People but copy stuff, sort of like. Yeah. 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 They're starting to. Because some of the stuff from Mato Ortiz has these intricate yeah. patterns. Oh, in. yeah. That's, yeah. They're, yeah. They're starting to do that. We were doing a demonstration one time, and there was this guy that was, he was there, you know, with us. And he knows about her pottery. So there was a lady that came in and said, Oh, look, someone's here from Mata Ortiz. And they all, <laughs> he, he went off. Uh, he was like, No, 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 no. 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 This, is, this is the original artist here. <laughs> this is beautiful work. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Where's the sun? Where's the in the garage. Um, you guys have huh? You guys have yeah. Which? On the second floor. Just when you go up, get off the elevator, you can see it. Okay. Well, I can do the key. Okay. You don't, you don't want to work. I make a do a card. So what's the length for a pot that size? It takes you. Um, the pot will take me the whole week to finish the whole thing. Working eight hours? Um, well, I don't work yeah. eight hours. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I have to go and go pick up my grandkids, mm -hmm. and then I still have to come home and cook and yeah. do all that. So that's why it takes me about a week to, to. Um, but not that's just painting. Yes. Yeah. But what, what I do is um, I make, like, for this size, I probably will make about 10, 10 of them. Okay. And then I'll put them on the shelf. And then I, on, the, on the bigger ones, I probably could make about four. Okay. And then just put them there, and then when I'm ready to 
start painting and I I pick I just get one right and just then you put one to rest yeah and work on it yeah sense. and then like at home I have one that's like halfway lined okay then when I get home I'll probably work on that one then when I finish that one then I'll probably work on either one of these yes, yeah yes. so so I at just, the end of the month, then you have six? Or the um, then you have well, six. actually, I only can do, like, like this size or the smaller size, I, I can do one. Yeah, and then um, the, the smaller, smaller ones are harder to do. Yes, I imagine. Yeah, so, but the bigger ones are, it takes more time. So do you ever work big, big? Um, yeah, I, um, for last year's in the market, I had, I done one about that big. Nice. About that big. A lot of, a, a, one of these? A lot of yeah. yeah, a large, a large jar, yeah. I, and you sold it? Yeah. Yes. Well, the first, the year before, no, yeah, the year before, I sold one to the, um, museum at Colorado Springs. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, then this one, I think this other one that I sold for last year and went to Florida, so. Awesome. Yeah. So. You're all over. Yeah. Great. Hi. What's the tool you used to do for etching? Um, I'm, I'm painting. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, painting. yeah, and then this is the yucca. Oh, this yucca. is, yeah, it's this. Uh -huh. And then I, what I do is I cut the the sharp tip off and I chew it chew it down to fibers and this is the, a new one that I just made. So what I do is um, I chew it down to maybe three four fibers. It just depends on how how um, thin I want my lines to be. Yeah, and then I'm um, when I'm ready to start filling filling it in. Then I cut another one and then I make it the size of the, to fill in the, mm -hmm. the pots. Yeah, those are all my, the pots that are, that I, that I do. How many do you have to use to do a pot this size? <laughs> well, I, I make a lot because um, sometimes the, there'll be like a, a bubble on the side and then I have to get a tweezer and then I pull it off. Uh -huh. And then if I pull it off, then the whole thing gets messed up. So then I, that's why I have the other... I see. Other backup right here, so. And then these are all my natural pigment paints. Mm -hmm. This is the white slip that I put on the pottery before I paint it. And what I do is I put the slip on, and then I use the polishing rocks to to smooth the pottery. And then these are all just the paints that I use, the different paints that I use on the pots. And then this is the clay that I used to make the pots. My husband was grinding, but... He had to go do something. Yeah, so. And then the what, what we do is we put the, um, there's the clay, it has, comes in big chunks like that. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we, um, we put it in the pan and it falls, falls apart. It just falls apart? Yeah. It just, once you put the, the water in, it falls apart to like small. Uh -huh. And then that's when he starts grinding the clay. And then after he grinds the clay, then he has a sifter that he sifts. After he sifts the the clay, then um, he starts um, mixing the the mud, the, the clay for for mm -hmm. me, and then that, that's when I start making the fine like flour. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's like um, fine like flour. Like he uses a um, a small um, screen. And, yeah. 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 And then and then that's when I start forming the small pots like that. I make it into like a small, um, like a cup. What I do is I stick my hand in there and then just get a gourd and just start uh, pushing it out or pulling it up. We have different tools for to make the pots. The small pots, I have like a, a, a spoon, like a soup spoon, and I bend it and then just because my fingers won't finish, so I push, push it out on the sides. and Yeah, but the bigger ones, we use the coil. And the coil is, we make like a bowl, and then we get the the clay, we roll it out like a snake, and then just pat it uh -huh. on, and then just um, add it on like extensions, and 
smooth it up in the top and the, in the inside. And after do, after I do all that, then um, I scrape the um, I scrape the the pot because sometimes they're heavy, and I scrape it. And after I scrape it, then I smooth it out with my hands. After I smooth it out with my hands, then um, I uh, put the um, I use the sandpaper and I sand it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's to where the roof, roof part. And then after I do that, then that's when I put the um, the polish. The this is the polish. Uh -huh. And after I do that, then I use the polish and stone and I um, polish the the pot. But if you don't polish it and the see how the the pot is you know kind of rough inside. Mm -hmm. If you just paint it, then if you go like this, then the the paint will wipe off. Yeah, so. So you have to do something on the ones that are finished, you do something on the inside as well? Um, well, I just um, sand it inside uh -huh. too, yeah, as well. So after I do that, then after I do the polishing, then I um, put the, the pencil lines on there to kind of give me a, a guideline. And then that's what I'm doing is um, lining. And this is what I'm using for to make the fine lines, yeah. So after I do all that, then that's when I, and then I'll, I'll go around one more time right here. And after I go around and finish all this going around with the lines, then I start coming down. Oh and after I do all that, then that's when I start filling in the, the pattern. Or If I want to leave, leave it black and white, then I leave it black and white. For if I want to put color, then I put color. But the, if you put color, it takes longer mm -hmm. to do, yeah. Especially like if you have to, um, like that big one, see where it has the color at the top? Mm -hmm. Once I put all the color on there, I, I usually put the red first. Then after I put the red, then I put the yellow. Then after I do the yellow, then I do the brown. Once I do all that, then I have to line the whole pot again. Wow. Yeah, so. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then, and you have to let each color dry yes. and the next one bleeds well, into it? Um, well, actually, it dries fast. Uh -huh. Yeah, just like this one, once you make your line, and it'll just dry right away. Yeah. But the, the like, the yellow and the red, it, you have to wait till it dries, because if, if it don't dry, then it kind of, you know, gets on, blends into the, to the other one, yeah. And do you have the whole design in your head before you start? Um, well, actually... Um, I don't know what I'm gonna put in it until I, until I finish uh -huh. lining the whole thing. So after I um, line the whole thing, and I'll sit there and then I'll I wonder what I should put on it. Should I put color or no color or? But um, most people like color because mm. it shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of them just like the just the black and white. But like the half ones, um, I just put the. The, the patterns on one side. Uh -huh. Sometimes, uh, well, some of them are, are have like four different patterns uh -huh. on each side. Yeah, so. And you do all the grid work by eye? Mm -hmm. It's so, yeah. it's, it's so regular. Yeah, I, I, I just, it just takes, yeah. And then this is the, the paint, the bee weed. It's called bee weed. But we call it the wild spinach. Um, from Akama, we call it the wild spinach, but they call it bee weed. And what we do, it's a plant with purple flowers on it. And what we do is we, um, we boil it in a pot until it gets real thick. And then once it gets real thick, like uh, almost like sap, then we put them on the, the corn husk. We put them on the corn husk and we let them dry. So. And then you can paint with it. Yeah, that's what we. That's what this is. Um, this is made of. This is the paint. And have you been doing this all your life? Um, well, I, I I started doing it when I was um, 18 years old when um, I got married, and my husband's mother was the one that taught me how to make the pots. But the pottery process, I mean the painting process, I learned on my own. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, actually, I'm the only kind of the only one that does this pattern on the Akama resident. But people are starting to um, 
when the, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, well, but the, our, um, but the, story. like the, the, um, the galleries know my style and, mm -hmm. like, my work, so, yeah. Yes. This is your work? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So detailed. Mm, thank so you. So you're showing how you get it down? Yeah, I am. Are oh. these coiled pots? Yes, these are all, um, hand coiled and pots. And um, I use the yucca and I chew it down to fibers to make all the my paint brushes and that's what I make all the fine lines with. You chew the tips yeah, of I, the yucca? Yeah, yes. Well, I, I cut off the, the sharp tips and then I chew it. I chew it down to like the fibers. Like this one probably has about two or three fibers. It just depends on how, how thin I want my lines to be. Yeah. And then um, I use the, this is the polish that I put on the pot before I start painting. Because if you don't put the, um, the polish on there, and if you just, it'll, it'll just, the paint will just wipe off. Yes. And then after I, I start lining, going around all the way down, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another line in the middle through here. Cool. And then after I do all that, then I start coming downward. And when you do your grit, then you go and fill them in? Yes. And then I, they're just all nothing but small little squares. So what I do is I start putting my patterns in. Yeah, and these are all my paints. They're all natural pigment paints from our, our Pueblo. And this is the, um, the clay that we use. And what it, it comes in big chunks. It comes in big, bigger chunks than this. And what we do is we put it in a pan, and then we, he puts water in there, and then it falls to small pieces. And then um, my husband was grinding the, the clay. And once he grinds the clay, then he um, sifts sift it with the sifter. And then after he does, then he starts mixing the, the clay so I can make the... So we can both make, he makes his own pots, I make my pots, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So. And that's the basic, the clay for the actual yes. coiling? Yeah. Not the pigments? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then the bigger, well, um, some of the, the, the bigger ones, we use the coil. Mm -hmm. But, like, the, the smaller ones, we use the, um, we get a clay, and we put it, like, shape it into a cup or a bowl. And then what I do is I stick my hand in there, and then I just oh, kind of like work it, it? yeah, but work my way up. And then I use like a you know a gourd, and a gourd, and then I, we have other tools that we make, um, make our pots with. Well, how do you take it out? No, it's 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 just all it's oh, like it's yeah it's it's all clay, and then what we do is just push it up. Yeah, you just like kind of push it. Yeah, yeah. But the big the bigger ones. Like these big ones, we use the um, we use the coil. And what what the coil is is you make a bowl, and then you just like get the clay and you roll it like like yeah. a snake, and then you just then you just kind of um, put the put, yeah you you build it up yeah that's that's so how all. do you get this texture? Is that later on those big pots? Oh no, no, that's not. Those are on that side. Those are not. Yeah, just those. These ones on this side are mine. Yeah. And these pigments are from different color clay, huh? Yeah, these these come from our reservation. We're from the Pueblo of Acoma, and these do come on the bottom of the. I don't know. Have you ever been to the Acoma Pueblo? No. No. Well, any these. That's where these ones come. Except for this one. From the earth, is it? These yeah. colors? Yeah. These are all natural pigment paints that come from Mother Earth, so yeah. we don't buy any of the any of the paints that we use. Yeah. Yeah, and this is our clay our clay that we use to make the pots. Yeah. And that comes from where you live in. Yes. Area. Yeah. My husband goes to to mine it and it's like two miles two miles from where he he yeah. parks, he walks two miles with, get, with the mm -hmm. backpack and carries the big old yeah. chunks of clay and walks back. Yeah, so.
Wow. Yeah. And then the, the white slip is the um, one that uh, you put on the top of the the pots before you um, paint it. Yes. Because if you don't if you don't put that on there, then, then it gets spotty. It, it, um, well, actually, if you don't put the slip on, then if you put if you line it and if you go like this, so the paint will wipe off. Yeah. So you have to put the the slip on it because then see if you then it doesn't wipe off. Yeah. And do you varnish it with the rocks? To make it shiny? Or yeah, yeah. Stuff? After I put the, the white slip on there, then I used the polishing wax to, yeah, to. How liquid is that? How, is it like a milk consistency? Yeah. 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 Like milk. yeah. And then we use, this is called the, the bee weed. I don't know mm -hmm. if you uh, know what the bee weed is. Like a, well, we call it wild spinach in, in our, our mm -hmm. Pueblo, but... They call it bee weed, and what we do is we get the plant or the, the leaves, and then we, we boil it until it gets real thick. Mm -hmm. And then once it gets real thick, then we put them on the, the corn husks for it to dry. And how does it smell when you're boiling it? It smells not good. <laughs> not good? No. So, but what do you do with it? You oh, yeah, this is, it's the paint. Oh, it's the yeah, this is, it's, this is the paint that we, that we use. Yeah, see, this is the... That's what is the result yeah, of like, the boiled... Yeah, it's like a sap, like, and that's... It doesn't smell bad. It does when it you're cooking it. Yeah. <laughs> it smells like caramel. <laughs> caramel. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And that's the pigment you... Or the paint that you do the yeah, black this is, lines with? Yeah, I that's see. the one I do the black lines with, yeah. Yeah, but this one is from the, this is the only one that's not from the Pueblo, it's from down here, the La Bajara. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we get the, the paint. Yeah, the paint dries real fast, so you have to. Is that a rock that you have there? Yeah, it's part of it's, um, the paint, too. It's a uh, paint, the rock. And every time you mix the paint, is the color slightly different? No, it's, it's always comes out the same. Okay. But it looks brown there, but it's black when you paint yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. And it comes out black, too, when you... When when you, you fire yeah. And is this still raw clay? Yeah. So it's, it's not this No, color. it's... No. You can only paint on, on the raw, yeah. And then once you finish it, and then it, we, we fire it, mm -hmm. yeah.
you can just pet him. Do your hands cramp up? No. No? So you just did one circle right now? Yeah. It takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my hands are just cold. Can I see those again? Yeah. So fun. Like even capture it. You can't even tell. <laughs> Thank you for showing mm -hmm. us. Falling asleep. <laughs> I'm sponsoring my, my granddaughter for the track and field for the um, run and walk a -thon. So um, she asked me if um, it's like a, um, like a, um, like if she runs, how many times she can run around the track? Like um, I can um, bid on her for like $10 to run like five times around the trap or $20 or something like that. Yeah, so she was wondering if I sent the money in, but it's not letting me, um, it's not take, It's not going through, so she's going to have to tell her coach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
this causal problem for us to kind of yeah, mirror each other. Yeah. That's the same thing about the carbon for that actually. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Where is Denise? Oh, Denise is just over there behind the desk. Hey, Denise. Yeah. Frederica is asking for you. She's wondering where you are. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I didn't see you. I didn't see you all day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh. Good to see you. Don't let me shake your hand. <laughs> hmm. It's so fascinating to see you do that <laughs> and to see, I'd never seen you work and the polishing is amazing. And You didn't see me polish? No, I did see you. To watch you do that, it was amazing. It, it's so much, it comes up so much more quickly than I would have thought mm -hmm. as you do it. Yeah. It's really, now does it have to be a certain wetness to the clay when you're as you're doing it, or the polish? Yeah. Um, no, it's um, you have to you have to also try and do it before it gets dry. Before it dries. Yeah. Okay. Because then if it dries, then it, it just and then like kind of like peels off. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you have to. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's and then just... like yeah, like this is our um, this is our paint. Uh huh. Let uh, me smell it. It's... Oh wow! What is that? It's or, beeweed. Ah, yeah. that's then, the beeweed. Um, look, pick that up and smell it. No, just um, this. Yeah. Oh. Just like you want to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to eat it. <laughs> Ask him how it tastes. I will. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. You taste it? Mm -hmm. Amazing. He said, get some energy. <laughs> yeah, although I'm very sleepy, so the dead body. I was going to say, you don't look like it gave you energy. I think it might be tired. <laughs> it might be, it might be aggressive. <laughs> mm. Fabulous. And the brush is yucca? Yeah. I just make this. Just make your own little. Yeah, just they're just. I kind of make a lot because then sometimes when, when there's like a ball or something, then you pull it and then you, when you pull it, then the whole strand will come we'll off. Keep or, going. Yeah, so I make, make three of them. Your hands are so skilled. <laughs> yep. I was I was telling my husband I wish I had already um like one to where I can um fill it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but oh my god, it just went by so fast this week.
So did you get a hold of that person? Did I? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Jen did. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was her, huh? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. Okay. Can I take a pie? Yeah. Take a little look at the pots. Beautiful.
yeah, grinding like on that. the cup. Yeah, and like then this is the white slip grind, that we oh, use. I, so I when we put on the like the pot, like and then after the I put the white slip on, then I use the polishing stone to yeah to polish it. Yeah. And then um. Once I once I put the polish and I put the the pencil lines on, it just kind kind of give me a yeah, and then I start painting. Because if you don't put the um, the white slip on, then if, if you start painting and when you go it this way, the paint will wipe off. Will wipe off. Yeah. So the slip kind of uh, like a primer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Attaches yeah. the yeah. colors. Yeah. Yeah. I've used the four or five pictures you've given me. You know, you go this way and then you come in this way and then you come in yeah. that way. You know, and people are just taken aback. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I have some the old dried out. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Just take a step this way. Sure. I'm Thank sorry. you. Just so you know, you're in YouTube, so. Okay. <laughs> oh. YouTube, oh. YouTube world. Right. Yeah. Talking. yeah. No problem. But, uh, no, and if you want to talk, the best way to do it is to ask questions. Ask questions uh, so, we can so get everybody YouTube. can see. It. Exactly. Yeah. Ah. So I don't use this for my face. I use it for the polish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then these are all just the the paint brushes that I use with the yucca. Yeah. So yeah, I just brought that down. Look how fine it is. Yeah, I'm gonna his way in. Amazing. Yeah, because some ladies that were asking about that, I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you gotta get it really fine. Yeah. You wouldn't just use it straight off. The and after you're green. doing the yucca, does that one then go away, or do you hang on to it? I hang on to it till I really don't so need it, it anymore. Does it doesn't <laughs> produce for you anymore? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Which one? Oh, really? With the lid. Wow. Yeah. Do, you, do you mind talking about this one real quick? No. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. That's beautiful. With the because lid. somebody's buying it. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> what am I going to say about this? Well, uh, how many? So, where did you get the idea for a cylinder? <laughs> I um. <laughs> I was uh, sitting there and I was watching TV, and the French mortuary um, website came on, and he brought out the urns, and and then he goes, "We should make an urn." <laughs> so that was the so, intention yeah. of it, right? <laughs> yeah. So I said. That's where the idea. She just seen it and she was. And then I said, "No," I said. He goes. So, I, I, so I said, "It's a it's a cookie jar. <laughs> we'll call it an urn." <laughs> so who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? <laughs> yeah. And how many of these have you made? This is the first. Well, congratulations! First it's something so very different. Somebody got the first cookie jar. Well, thank you so very uh -huh. much, Frederica, for talking about the first cookie jar. <laughs> Not an urn. It's a cookie jar. <laughs> Do all the pigments come from stones or ground down, or yes. are they um, The only one that is is the the bee That's for the black. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing. Those are all just minerals. Yeah. The colors. Well, my friend Maria was coming over to talk to you about. She knows somebody named Ibrahim that was going to replant something to use for pigments. A bulb. Um, I forget what she was saying. That's probably the lady that remember I was talking to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Asked earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she had said she got a hold of some seeds. Right, right, right. Because back home it's hard to find the bee weed. That's what she's talking and about. And then I was like, I was out there one day looking for some, and then I seen somebody chopping the whole plant down. You know, usually we just pull all the leaves off and let the flower turn to seeds and. But they were chopping down the whole plant, so right. there's just no way it's gonna come back. Bring itself back. Yeah, so so I was talking about that over at the museum and then she said she was gonna see you where we could get some. Yeah. Because it's it's pretty hard to find. That's what I said. And what do you use that for? Um you you get like just this amount right here. It's like maybe, I don't know, maybe two trash. This is what she was talking about. Yeah. That's just that just comes out from maybe two trash bags of, of leaves. That's all it comes up comes down to. You just boil it and boil it all day, and you just you know just take all the leaves out once they get boiled. It just it just comes down to that. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. 
Um, it's just like a sap. Yeah, like a sap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we mix it into the, the, the paint so that it'll... I think the the rock is, is brown, but I think that makes it black once it gets fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because most everybody that uses it, their gold paint comes out black too, so... The chemical change. Yeah, so I think that's what it is. Yeah. See, these are, these are rocks that we use, yeah. For coloring as well? That's that's the black, yeah. Mm -hmm. But these ones are the brown so the down, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not beeweed that you used. That's the rock you used. No, it's the beeweed. That is beeweed though. There, it's it's the rock. And the beeweed. She, first she does the rock, then she adds in the beeweed. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Especially during allergy season, trying to do that during allergy season. Yeah. Yeah. She don't have allergies. You don't have allergies. Is it okay to take a picture while you're doing this? Mm, yeah, I guess. It's okay if not. <laughs> no, it's like this. <laughs> Is it your granddaughter that you're teaching to paint? Do all the rest as well? Well, I was, but. She tried, but uh, well, she still tries every now and then. Yeah. But she's a runner, so she's pretty much busy right now. Yeah, she's pretty much into. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Like, like that size that she's doing. That only has like maybe one coil. Yeah, so it's just like. Some of them where they do much of the little, little mm -hmm. forces. Right. We just do the big, you know, roll out the clay and slap it flat and build it up. So, like these ones, like I said, these ones are probably only just one coil. And then the other ones are with two. the lips on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Do you draw the pattern out first, or is this all going from your mind? It's just all from my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I just do all the the fine the the lines going around, mm -hmm. and then after I do the lines going around, then I start coming down, and then I just make I'm gonna go around one more time on the pot all the way around, and then I'm gonna come down. And after I do all that, after with, with the, all the small squares, then I start filling in the patterns. Hmm? Yeah. So, but I don't know what I'm gonna, how it's gonna come out, or mm -hmm. yeah, if I'm gonna put color on it, or if it's just gonna be black and white. So I don't. Just speaks to you as you're yeah. moving it along. Yeah. 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 That's how I make jewelry. That's exactly how I do it. Mm -hmm. I don't sit and draw it. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Although in so class that was part of your grade was drawing and then you have to finish it exactly as you're drawing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you do one pot from start to finish or do you have a few working at one time? <laughs> <laughs> Ten different working at one time? I have about four. Four? Yeah, I have like two of them that are half finished at home. Then came up here and I'm working on this one and this one. Then I'll start back with the first one that I've done then and, and I'll probably go back just, just yeah. <laughs> so. Small 
New Mexico is the biggest place that you sell your jewelry? I mean, your pottery? Um, Arizona? No, probably here, huh? Yeah, probably. Just up here. Yeah. Over here, um, Andrea Fisher's and then that King Gallery's and then in Albuquerque will be over at Ernie's. Yeah. But I haven't gone to Ernie's for like, I don't know how long. Cookie jar right away. <laughs> the first one, he would have loved it. We just went to go see the, what was that? Was it the bumblebee? Yeah, the bumblebee. Oh, the bumblebee because the Iron Man got run away. <laughs> have you guys seen that? Did you see the gorilla? Yeah. What is it? The, um, yeah. you guys haven't been, to, have you guys been to Ernie Montoya's at um, Sun West Silver? A long time ago. I'll be perfectly honest. They don't let us out of here very much. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot to do, so yeah, there was a, it's, like it's a, hard even making it to the plaza. There was like, <laughs> and a, that's right there. <laughs> there was like a um, what was it? A Transformers. They're, oh, they're yeah. made of car parts. Yeah, I know. I know of it. And then that one got knocked over. Yeah, it's, that's Albuquerque for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> So they put up another one that's called Bumblebee. Okay. And then they put up a, a gorilla one that was made with all spark plugs. Oh, that's kind yeah. of gorilla one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you feel like you want to touch that gorilla. Yeah, this stuff is right. See, this one. Oh, yeah. Do you sell over at Ernie's? Um, Ernie's... Here, next oh, is here? Yeah. Well, his story is Oh, yeah, I know his story is. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, they were saying, you know, like, how do you take 10, but she can do like one and Yeah. So she, that's just what she does, you know. Once in a while, I'll get mine to do. Mm. Does it look the same? No, it's like one of the not even. I just do regular, traditional, like in the designs. I can't do that. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> Are you living on the reservation? <laughs> yeah. That's where we live. Frederick, have you done any plates? Mm -mm. So from my understanding, plates plates are one of the most difficult yeah, they are. things to make. They seem like they would be really easy, 
but in reality they're really tough because they tend to warp yeah. in the drying process and yeah. in the firing process. So very few artists even I tried, attempt. I tried it once, huh? I tried making that one, but... It, it came just, out as a yeah. taco? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's something that's surprising is that plates seem like they would be easy, but in reality they're tough. Well, there's two ladies from Acoma that do these plates that have little butterflies that stick out of them. And Ernie carries a couple of them as well, but they're all kind of smaller. Yeah. Rebecca? Mm hmm. That would be Carolyn and Alicia. Alicia. Alicia would be all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're cute with the, mm -hmm. with the ladybugs on mm -hmm. And each one has meanings as to what the animals mean. But like we were talking about before, everybody has a very different end product of what pots are. But the, the similarities and how everything is made is intense. And so it's very odd to think that everything is almost identical, sure. but is so different sure. at the same time. Started the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we think of the jewelry, like, hand somebody the same stone, the same, you know, what are you going to do with it? We're going to have something different. Yeah. Well, even Cody, uh, Cody Sanchez says, you know, Jerry, what you're doing as an artist, you're going to be stuck in the same place to make sure. Yeah. Any other magnifiers besides those glasses when you start to get real small? No. <laughs> Just those ones. It's impressive. I'm not even looking through my glasses, I'm looking over my glasses. Like at home, when when he's when he's standing there, and he'll be watching me. Then I then I look at him and say, "Don't watch me." <laughs> yeah. I get mad at him and tell him not to watch me. <laughs> what do you do when you're a millimeter off, or a millimeter off that way, or a millimeter off that way? I mean, um, work with it. Yeah. I just blend it in when I fill it in. Well, part of the challenge of it is, is that the pieces are made by hand. And because they're made by hand, they're not round. Right. And so you're putting a, a geometric pattern on a non-even piece. 
So what that means is, is that no matter what, there's going to be fibs here and there because the jar itself is not straight. Sure. So a little bit here and there is going to look just fine. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We get up like, and then we take like a ten-minute break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have an orange or something. He says, "Let's go, go have an orange break." Nice. <laughs> Are oranges your favorite? Yeah. <laughs> More than cuties or mandarins or tangerines. Um. Yep. So a big fan of oranges. Personally, I'm a big fan of cold apples. They have to be cold out of the fridge. <laughs> Oh yeah, they they call that the infinity rim. Infinity rim. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you do a lot of. Them. No, they're too hard. <laughs> too hard. That was only a mistake. <laughs> yeah, isn't it fun how mistakes turn into some of your most interesting stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Those two are, are the newest ones that I've done. Yeah, those two. Yeah. Those are the newest ones. And did you make it like this and then cut? Yeah. Well, actually, it was just like a bowl. And just And then the, uh, the, the square mouth, yeah. And there was another one. I can't remember what the other one was. Seems like you produce quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, she works hard. This is her job. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's two people's oh, yeah. jobs, right? Yeah. yeah. Jobs. And yeah, full time I brought all the time. two new ones over there. Oh, yeah. before market. When they're like big like this, then I, I add color in it. Yeah. So.
the black pieces, the way that they link it is she has yucca, but she's poor. Thank you.
I'm okay. Yes. Thank you. It's my dream. Oh, yeah, it's um, made from the yucca. The yucca, I, I cut it like about that far, and then I chew it down to the, the fibers. And that's how I make uh, my paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I make all the, the fine lines with. And these are all the natural pigment paints that go on the pots. Well, how long does it take from the time you take the clay, take the clay and do everything until um, it's finished? Well, we we'll have to grind the grind the clay, we'll soak the clay, grind the clay, sift the clay, mix the clay, and then that's when we start making the the pots. I pick a day and I make like. Um, probably the smaller ones I probably could make about 10 and then the mediums maybe about 6 and then the bigger ones you know, about 4 of them and then I put them on the shelf and then when I'm ready to paint then that's when I start um, picking out which, which pot I want to paint How long does the painting take? Um, well this one I started today so I'll probably finish it by next Friday Thursday, Friday yeah. So a whole week? Yeah so, because then um, I need to go around one more time. Each one is more beautiful. <laughs> and then I need to come down one more time. So, after I do all that, then I have to put the pattern. Yeah. So, you have to, and then this is the white slip that I used to put on the pot. And then I use the polishing stone to polish it to make it shiny. And when I do that, then... Um, that's when I start making the, the lines. If I don't put the slip on, then the paint will wipe off. Yeah. Well, I keep you from your work, but um, it's a pleasure meeting you. Mm, thank you. The designs are so intricate. It's amazing. Yeah, those are all my um my my own my own patterns. Um, is there a special means? Well, the, that's like the steps coming down, and then the the bottom is like the butterfly pattern, and then all all the red on on the, all the pots all represent the clouds. The the red represents the sun, and then the dots on there represents the rain. The inside represents the mother earth. Yeah. So you're putting on each and every dot. Yeah. I fill in each, each one. I have a cousin in Corrales, last month I saw one of your pieces online. Mm -hmm. So I took a screenshot and I sent it to her and I said, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> see one in my future. I love this one. I think they sold a bigger one. There was a bigger one, but I think they sold it. Those infinity bowls are special. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I never saw that before. Yeah. Curved. We call them infinity rooms. Thank you. It is an honor to meet you. Uh, Thank mm -hmm. you.
Frederica, are you pretty much done? Yeah. Okay, well, let me put you on to screen real quick. And say, well, everybody, thank you so very much for tuning in. Uh, we really enjoyed having Frederica demonstrate her wonderful painting techniques. It was fun talking with you. I hope you had a good time. Um, and maybe you want to do this again sometime. Yes. So, well, thank you so very much. And we really, really, really appreciate you being here. And don't know how to thank you, except for we love seeing your beautiful work. So thank you so much for coming by. And uh, appreciate you having you here at Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, everybody. Fortunate.